Well, hello, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Living United with Nashua Business. I'm your host, Mike Affelberg. You know, the idea of this show is that we bring to the air businesses that are local from within our community and talk about what they do, how they're making a difference for their customers and how they're making a difference in the community. And I can't tell you how excited I am today to have with me on the show some good friends of ours who've been great community supporters who I've known for a very long time, our friends from GM Roth Design Remodeling. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks good, for having us. Good seeing you. So we have John Martin and we have Spencer Roth from GM Roth. And I'm thinking maybe Spencer will start out with you if you don't mind. Yeah. Spencer, there's no coincidence that the name is GM Roth and your name is also Roth. Yes. So I'm taking it this is a family business and maybe let's just talk a little bit about the history and what you do. Yeah, so family business. Um, my father, Jerry, started the business back in uh, it was 1986. So once we hit 2023, we'll be in our uh, 37th year, uh, which is awesome. So. It started back in 86, him and my mom had just moved into a two family. Um, my dad was actually working at digital at the time, but when they bought that two family, he decided to um, try his hand at remodeling, um, which went very well, obviously. Um, so basically he, he kind of fell in love with remodeling, uh, just remodeling that two family with him, and, with him and my mom you know, by his side. And it just really took off from there. And here we are 37 years later, we're a full service remodeling company. We, we do kitchens, baths, additions, decks, finish basements, finish attics, really anything you can think of in, in the remodeling sphere, uh, we'll take care of. Um, so, and it's not just the family business, although my sister is there as well as the head of accounting. Yep. Um, my mom's part of the business, Sandy as well. She helps uh, in the accounting department as well, but she's more of a part-time basis now. Um, and me and Taylor have started taking on more of a bigger role in the business. I'm the director of production. So really my, my world is uh, all things production, making sure that the customer gets exactly what they expected and we deliver a premium project, uh, no matter what it is. It's, we're really turning their home into their dream house. That's our goal with every client. Um, and it's not just the family, you know, we have 20 to 28 employees now. Um, so one of our big things that we sell on is that we're a one stop shop. So we'll take mm -hmm. care of the design. We'll take care uh, of all the upfront work, all the pre-production work, permitting, product procurement, all that stuff, engineering if necessary. And then we have the carpenters in place to actually produce the project. So, you know, it's, it can be a challenge when homeowners have to go hire out a kitchen designer then they have to hire out a general contractor and possibly involve an architect or an engineer. So the big thing that we do is we package that all together for the homeowner so that they can just go to, to one outfit and have everything done. Yeah, and I know you have a pretty big, um, well outfitted showroom as well, is that right? Yes, yep. So we showcase mainly our kitchens and baths in, in, um, in the showroom. And you, know, you, you can take a look at windows and siding as well, mm -hmm. but the main focus of the showroom is in the kitchen and bath world. Now, would you say, uh, now I'm just going to talk about the showroom for a second, if you don't mind. Uh, is the showroom really more to give people ideas or is it really specific, like use this design kind of a thing? John, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Oh, for sure. sure. Um, I mean, the showroom is, is, is there to help our customers with a starting point because there are yeah. millions and millions of choices. And our, our main function is, is designing our customer's project, not our project. So we'll give them some ideas and they can walk around and say, I like this, I like that. And then we'll source what we need to source at the different occasions in different places. So it really is a, uh, uh, an experience that the customer can, can get where they're actually gonna get their project instead of a contractor's project because a lot of other contractors do the same thing over and over and over and over. So it's a starting. Every project is brand new to us yeah. and we start with that design phase. We start with either the architecture or the, or the um, kitchen and bath or whatever it's necessary to make that project come to life. So it's kind of really just a starting point to it generate some ideas point, and get the conversation going. But, but people, do you like this or do you like that? Okay, let's move in this yeah. direction and we'll go where we need to go to find what we need to find. What if um, somebody comes along and they want to 
actually do like real construction within their house as well. Like I want walls to go. I want to, you know, like I don't, I want an open concept, for example. We, my wife and I recently moved um, out from Nashua. We sold our home and it was a very typical kind of a New England colonial, right? With small rooms and lots of them, which is, we loved that and found it to be extremely quaint. When we went to sell the place, everybody who came through was like, well, 20 years younger than me and wanting an open concept. And at first I'm like, what do you even mean an open concept? Oh yeah, we would get rid of this wall, that wall, and that wall. I'm like, but that's my living room and that's my kitchen. How do you, you can't put those together, but that's the idea these days. Do you, do you find yourself doing a lot of that? Moving, really removing walls too? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's most of what we do is space changes. So that's kind of like no kidding. a little niche that we found ourselves in. Because yeah. like I was saying, we have that, that team in place that can handle the engineering. We have um, you know, several people that have the construction supervisor license on staff. So yeah. we, we know the codes inside and out. Um, so when you're taking down you know, load bearing walls, we're fully equipped to design, and, um, just to design that for the client. That's probably really helpful because I didn't know where I'm like, well, I'm sorry that this house is not what you want, but uh, you know, you're gonna have to fix, change it somehow. Um, it probably is also interesting, I think, for you to see how as the population changes, we have younger people buying houses, but we also have an aging population, right? And one of the things that we know from United Way is that uh, this New England area is surprisingly one of the most rapidly aging areas in the country. In fact, I think New Hampshire is number two on the list behind either Vermont or Maine. You know, we're all in the top three. And people always think about, you know, Florida and Arizona when they think about, um, you know, seniors and large senior populations. But it's really here. And that probably affects a lot of the work you do as well, I'd imagine. Is that fair or? I'd say it's very fair, especially yeah. recently. I mean, just given exactly what you said, the statistics that are coming out now. 1900, there were 200,000 people over 65. Now there's 18, 20 million, and that population is mm -hmm. going to continue to grow. And by yep. the 2040, there'll be over 24 million people in that particular category. And people like to live in their homes, they want to stay yeah. in their homes. 90% of the people who are 50 and over envision themselves staying there or getting into a home that they can live forever because memories are there and all sorts of different things are there that where, where people really feel comfortable in their home. So we do that every day. Yeah, so my aunt recently, well, she before she transitioned into an assisted living facility, she um, had her apartment that she was living in heavily modified to do things like creating a barrier free, you know, room access to her bedroom. And I know she was looking at doing some modifications in her kitchen, in her bathroom, all things around being able to age in place. And I think there are even some industry certifications to do that type of work. Is that, what are you, what, are you involved with that? Funny thing you mentioned that. Uh, Spencer and I are both certified aging place specialists. I mean, we've gone through our, 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 our certifications and national Home Builders Association, yep. they have all sorts of different things, and we actually have three people in the company, Jerry, yep. his father Jerry is also. As well. So we, we actually focus on that stuff, and, and there's uh, all sorts of important things that, that we do to make sure that that person is comfortable in their home mm -hmm. and can function in their home and can stay in their home because you know people age and some people age different differently. You know, 16% of the people who are over 65 have some sort of disability, whether it's visual mm -hmm. or mobility or whatever it is. So you have to be able to adapt to that. And we spend an awful lot of time understanding that, you know, different things that we've gone through is like recent seminar I went to with people who have sundown. And mm -hmm. some people are familiar with that where at night people, old, people who are aging start to get a little mm -hmm. difficult to handle. So there's all sorts of things you can do with lighting and things like that, that that make a big difference in, in taking care of those people mm -hmm. and making sure it's done properly. What are the biggest modifications that you end up getting involved with? Well, like most popular types of modifications for aging in place. Um, obviously, but there's kind of falls into three. One, your bathroom. But right. if you go back it up for people who are aging in place, you have to get into the place. So you need access. And then you have, need to be able to move around. Are the doorways wide enough? Are mm -hmm. the hallways wide enough? 
if, you know, if you're in a walker or you're not in a walker. Even a normal person walking who's a little unsteady of the feet needs a little more room to walk. And then obviously bathroom facilities have to be brought mm -hmm. up to code, curbless showers, all those different type of things to make, mm -hmm. to make it easy for them. And then <clears throat> sinks and vanities and all those. And then depending on the, the person's stage, whether in the kitchen, uh, they, can they get around the kitchen? Uh, kitchen mm -hmm. uh, counter heights, colors of countertops, because your eyes start to go. So right. you don't mm -hmm. want to be dropping stuff on the floor. So you have to have all those different things that make a big difference. Because let's face it, that the houses designed today are designed for a 20-year-old who can do everything. You know, the, the aging in place stuff is something you, you kind of have to do. And, and a big part of that... And it's pretty personalized, it sounds it's like. It's very mm -hmm. personalized. We have a checklist of 25 pages mm -hmm. that we go through to make sure that we're addressing all the issues in the, in the front end and making sure we get that proper design that's going to really work for them, not only today, but in yep. 10 years and 15 years. Because what you need today isn't necessarily what you need in 15 years or yeah. 20 years. So you really want to have that long... Long scope, and the, and once you've got it designed and you've got everything exactly the way you want, then you have to build it. Yeah, and that can be kind of trying. Yeah, and Spencer can talk a little bit about how, especially those type of clients that we have, how we can handle and make it as pleasant as possible. So uh, before we do that, I wanted yeah. to ask: so financing of those projects can be pretty expensive, I'd imagine. Okay. Is it possible? Are there? Is it possible to use like a construction loan? to do some of that work? In, in general, some people do construction loans, some people will do <clears throat> um, um, you know, equity loans in their house right. and stuff like that. I know people have used reverse mortgages and mm. stuff like that in order to stay where they need to do. You know, There's all sorts of options out there which you can do, and that's an important thing that you bring up, that you gotta have that kind of set up in the front part. Right. Um, how about resale value? What because I can imagine it can either be a real positive strong point or it can be a real po real negative um, you know aspect as well. Well, well, well funny you mention it because we have a lot of people who come to us and yeah. actually are looking for that auxiliary dwelling unit yeah. which is a, a place what we used to call in-law apartments. Now they're called auxiliary dwelling I don't know units. why we don't still call them in-law apartments. <laughs> because I really like that term. Everybody gets it, but but I know. But in the infinite <laughs> wisdom of the governmental <laughs> things, they, that, that like the state of New Hampshire a number of years ago, yeah. set forth some requirements that make yeah. towns allow you to have those. Mm -hmm. And so it was auxiliary dwelling units. And it goes all the way across mm -hmm. the country. But it's, you know, it, it's something... We, like I said, we had a customer who came to us, they were looking for a house because they knew they were going to have to take their parents and yeah. they went to, went to a home. So they sold their house and found one where we could actually put an auxiliary dwelling unit that works out really well. And it worked out really well for the, mm -hmm. for the family because they're just right there. They're either downstairs right. or next door or down a hall or, or there's all sorts of different ways that, that, that they can do in their own little kitchen and their own, so they can live their independent lives but next door. Well, right. I'm or trying to make I, sure that my kid's next house has a lot, enough room on it for for my auxiliary yeah, dwelling unit because go. it's it's going to be a necessity. I'm telling you, uh, and, and my daughter is in denial about this no. very much, but it's going to happen. I'm yeah, telling what you, what goes around comes around. Back in the 19, yeah. 1900s, yeah. people stayed together in family yeah. units. Then, we, as we went along, people separated. Now with COVID and the expensive yeah. things, families are coming back together maybe out of a necessity or maybe out of something that they really want to have happen. But, you know, the truth is it's, it's, it really is a good thing. You know, I, I grew up with a family that was very spread around. My, you know, my parents moved to California. I was raised there. My grandparents were in Florida, one set, and New York and the other mm -hmm. set. My cousins are all over the country. And now, now we're at the point where we're doing exactly the, the, the it comes around. Our, our, you know, our kids live locally. We're going to live near them, you know, <laughs> whether they like it or not, yeah. they might move. We're moving with them yeah. because, you know, you want to be your, your grandchildren and you want to be part of that family, the nuclear family. And I think that's hopefully a trend that's coming back. You're probably seeing a bunch of that. Yeah. Well, one of the things that makes <clears throat> us extremely successful is our processes. Mm. We follow processes all the time and, and kind of you can design something, you can get it nice, but until you get it built and finished and people are happy with it, it's not complete, right. and 
that's kind of the harder part in, in, in the long yeah. run is, is, is making it done. And, you know, Spencer yeah. and his guys are always make sure, and ladies, yeah. Ma yeah. Ma make sure that, uh, that it's done in, in such a manner because there's something called construction fever mm. that people exhibit. And we try to keep that very low, very right. methodical. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for all of that conversation about this. I think it's a really important topic. The whole aging piece is, you know, we see that in so many different ways in the social services side as well. Um, Spencer, I was wanting, wanting to ask you, so on the on the subject of a family business, yep. and I'm sure, I'm sure you guys are trying to figure out some way to exit Jerry and yeah. Sandy out <laughs> the door. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there are, you know, um, there's a culture in every business. And obviously, you know, Jerry and Sandy, they started the business, they grew the business, and now, you, now you're taking it over, you and Taylor, and it's becoming like that second generation. Right. Um, what do you picture as the future as far as the culture of GM Roth? What do you, what do you see keeping? What do you see changing? Where do you see yourself going? Well, we've always been very client focused and we definitely want to keep that peace intact because obviously if, if we don't have happy customers, then you know, the business is only going to go so far. Um, and it's really keeping the main core values intact, in which is our core values. Uh, they spell out the word client. Um, so it's courage, be open, honest, and willing to change uh, long term, which we want to have long term clients internally mm -hmm. and externally. So the internal clients are obviously the people that work at GM Roth. We want to make sure that, you know, we have very low turnover. We keep our key people in place for many years to come and we and we grow them, you know, um, throughout their careers. So they're m moving forward. Um, so the internal client is, because if you don't have happy employees, you're not mm -hmm. gonna put, you know, forth a good project. Um, and then external clients, of course, are the customers we work for. So that's the, um, the, the uh, L in long-term. I is integrity, you know, everything we do is with integrity. Um, E is excellence, you know, always striving to be excellent, put an excellent project out there. Um, N is kind of tricky, it's innovation. We couldn't think of a better one for the word N, but so it's, it's I with a capital N. That works, I get that. <laughs> we're always trying yeah. to bring in new, better products for our clients, and then, mm -hmm. and then T is the teamwork, because we always, that, that's huge for us, is uh, promoting a teamwork atmosphere, because you have your sales designer, project manager, lead carpenter, and they all work together to make sure that we keep that construction fever that John was talking about down to a very, very minimum. Because it's one of the most stressful things you can do in, in life because, you know, your home is kind of your sanctuary. So mm -hmm. we have the task of going in there, of demolishing a part of that sanctuary and putting it back together and, and keeping, keeping the owner of that sanctuary kind of happy and satisfied through all of it can be a challenge. So we have a lot of communication processes in place to make sure that um, you know our clients know what's going on every second of every day, so they don't have to you know think oh you know when's my plumber coming or when mm -hmm. you know when's my electrician coming back. They should we want to stay in front of that so those questions don't come don't come up and, and everyone's in the know and has you know a full idea of what's going on. Well, you know one of the advantages of being that one stop shop also is that your clients don't have to worry about arranging for the plumber and the electrician and right. all, all of that. You're doing that for them, right? Right. Making yep. sure that it happens. Exactly. Uh, the um, You mentioned employee turnover, and I know one of the ways in which uh, businesses work to make sure that their employees do stay around is by giving back in the local community. And I know that you know employees like working for companies that give back that participate in the philanthropy and the, the well-being of their community. And customers, of course, like working with companies that do that as well. Um, you guys have been really involved with our nonprofit lately, which we appreciate, mm -hmm. and um, wanted to mention that I, you uh, were sponsors for our Cornhole Tournament, yeah. which was great. And you came in second place, I think, too, right? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, and you're, you know, honestly, you're never going to come in first place because those guys. Oh, no. They're, they're incredible. Like, <laughs> they are, and one of them, the young, the young one wants to go pro, so you, that's just not going to happen. But second place is pretty good. Yeah, we were happy, for yeah. sure. <laughs> and recently you participated with us on a kit packing day, putting together um, care packages for local veterans living at the Delanus house. Um, 
What is it about that project that really resonated with you? Because I know that that was kind of your idea to put together something to support veterans. Yeah, so we have multiple uh, veterans on staff. So it kind of definitely uh, hits home in that sense. And then, you know, just getting the, the whole team together. I think we had 10 or 12 people. Yeah. So it's not only, you know, helping out the veterans, but also a team building exercise for GM Roth. And, and like you said, I, I, you know, when it's all said and done, everyone just feels really good about themselves and, and um, you know, positive attitude. Everyone's upbeat. It's just awesome for the company culture as well as doing something really good for those veterans in need that, um, you know, definitely need a lot of assistance in many ways. So we're just super happy to give back. Yeah, and we appreciate it too. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's gratifying for us when, a, you know, a business comes along and really wants to step it up in that way. So, mm -hmm. so thank you. Thank you both. Um, the um, Home Builders, you're members of the Home Builders Association as well, I believe? Yes. Okay. What is that? Um, how do, how are you involved with them typically? What is what is that as an association? Uh, so the Home Builders Association. Um, I, I mean, my dad's been a member for it's probably thirty plus years now. Um, so it's just it's a network group where we get together and talk about you know best ways to move our industry forward and things of that nature, um, and we give back to the community as well. Um, but really, it's, uh, it's you know, everyone getting together to think of best practices and things of right. that nature for home building. And, and I think you've won some awards with them, too. They're, what is it? Their Cornerstone Awards? Yep. Is that their? Yeah. Yeah. So, or a lot of them. Because I've been yeah, to your yeah. showroom, and there's like all these trophies on the wall. Yeah. So, Joe, I don't know if you want to take that one. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, the Home Builders Association every year run, runs uh, for design awards and from all sorts of different from kitchens, bath yeah. additions to outdoor, all sorts of different stuff that you submit and and um, and uh, there's judges and stuff like that. It just so happens that for the past, I don't know how many years, it's been a long time, we win the Cornerstone Award, which yeah. is the most popular uh, People's Choice Award. Yeah. And, and we, we seem to win all those every year. And, and in the different categories, we win between, I'd say, 7 and 11 every year. And yep between bath and and outdoor projects and decks and whatever so we mm. we, we really focus on quality work um, and and I guess that's one of the ways we can kind of measure our quality is that right other people in our industry recognize us as, as doing a good job and 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 providing providing a service that's that's well recognized are there limitations to how big or extensive a project would be for you guys to take it on? You know, would you would you tear a place down to the studs and build it from the ground up? I would say, I mean, that would be on the rare side, but if, if we had uh, the right client at the right location, uh, I would say it's definitely something we could handle. Uh, we're just not doing those projects day in and day out. More of our niche is uh, modifying existing yeah. or putting additions on Okay. You know, we've done a lot of uh, ranches, putting a second story on those. Um, so that's kind of more of our bread and butter for sure. Yeah, it's funny because when I first went to work at Jim Roth, um, I heard that, that someone asked Jerry, why don't you build houses? And Jerry says, it's too easy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you I mean, you scratch. said you're just building from scratch yeah. when you have to incorporate yeah. Um, a design into an existing structure, it has to look right. It has to feel right. Yeah. And then you have to be able to adapt to the situation that you have. You know, you run into, oh, we found this. We're right. going to have to change that. We're going to have to do this. Yeah. So it's a much more challenging environment, wouldn't you say? For sure. But, yeah. but, it, it, and, but it's more of a, um, an art, per se, because you really have to to make it look like, you know, you'll drive down the street and you'll see these houses and there'll be a box sitting next to a mm -hmm. house that you go, oh, that mm -hmm. doesn't look like it belongs there. Mm -hmm. We strive to make make it look like it's natural, it belongs there. It's something you go, ooh, that's nice. Yeah, and fits into in some way or another into the existing structure, just mod modifying yeah. it. I think that's interesting that it's not, it's too easy. I, I can see Jerry saying yeah, that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, but I, I had never heard the story about Jerry kind of starting out as the DIY guy yep. in his own duplex and saying, hey, this is kind of fun. I like this. I want to maybe do this for a living. That's, that's, a, that's a great story. 
Yeah, yeah, he just fell in love with it. Um, and then my mom kind of got taken along with him. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the way that usually yeah. happens. Um, is there a geographic territory that you guys cover? So we, we service um, northern Massachusetts, southern New Hampshire. So basically anything that you can get to from Nashville within 45 minutes is uh, really something that we'd be interested in. But okay. we've, we've taken jobs in um, Newburyport, some in Wakefield. Um, so we are starting to spread our territory a little bit as we're continuing to grow. Um, but I would say, you know, generally within that 45 minutes in Nashua. Sure, that probably makes sense in terms of organizing and coordinating with your with your guys and yeah, and the subcontractors and, and yeah, it makes sense. Um, where should people go to learn more? Website, phone number, all of that good stuff. Yep. So our website is just gmroth.com, um, and our phone number is 603-880-3761. Okay. Um, I, I know that personally, I would encourage anybody who's interested just to come by and look at your showroom, if nothing else. It's pretty remarkable, um, located right here between exits five and six in Nashua. Four and five, five and six, five and six. Four, four, four and five. five, yeah, right on Northeast Boulevard. Yeah. That's true, Yeah, four and five. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, well, listen, guys, we're just about out of time, but I did want to thank you for coming on the show. John, uh, thank, thank you so you. much. Spencer, I, we appreciate all the work that you guys are doing in the community and to help us out and to support and give back. Um, and I just love the work and seeing how GM Roth is growing and expanding its footprint. So great stuff. So I have a gift for you. A baseball cap, a United Way baseball cap. Um, I you. tell people um, everybody gets a gift when they come on our TV show, and it's never very good. So, uh, no <laughs> but congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Listen, thank you, thank you for everything you do. And thanks for having us. the support. Yeah, thanks Absolutely. for having us, Mike. So um, you've been listening to another episode of the uh, uh, in, uh, Living United with Nashua business television show. I've been speaking with GM Roth, local business, um, which specializes in remodeling, contracting. And you can learn more by going online and looking them up on the web. Thank you so much, Spencer and John. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.